once we cover these oddities, we'll be ready to go into all the normal settings inside of brush settings. So let's get this out of the way and get into the meat of everything. I'm going to go ahead and select just the standard cute snail that doesn't have any settings applied to it so that we can really see what's going on. I'll try to redock the brush. I've been having some problems with that with this version of Photoshop, which means they'll probably have an update soon. Clear that out. Okay, let me shrink this down. I'm just using the left bracket key. I could also hold down the alt key and right, right drag. Notice that because I cannot change the hardness on a capture brush, I do not have that red preview that would normally grant me a softness and fuzziness. Instead, while alt dragging with the right mouse button up and down, it simply changes the opacity. If I drag all the way down, it goes to opacity 100. All the way up will go to opacity 0. So keep that in mind while using the capture brushes rather than a round or hard brush. What do these do? Well, we have some grays in here which are interpreted uh, as anti-aliasing, which we saw when we switched to the pencil tool. So uh, using the brush, and I gotta get the brush here, and adding noise should add noise into those areas. Let's see if it will. It did, excellent. So you can see these staticky effects. It's a different way of interpreting the grays, essentially. And we'll fill in any gray area that is anti-aliased area with some noise. And noise is just a, a semi-random pattern, or hopefully in some case, a fully random pattern of uh, different amounts of tones. So in this, or in this case, tones, you could have noise that is in uh, amplitude instead, and you've heard that when things go or frequency, you know, that kind of thing going on on the radio or television. Uh, in this case, if you have uh, an older analog TV rather than the newer digital ones, if it has a poor connection, you'd see static going through it as it goes through. And this is becoming an artifact of yesteryear because these days you get a different kind of distortion where you'll get lines and color loss and that sort of thing on television. So that's kind of interesting. But that's what noise does. Let me get the brush back. And that's all noise does. There are times, brush please, there we go. There are times, and that's beyond the keyboard. There are times where you, you would want that and there are times where you not. Turn it on and off and see what you think. Wet edges are an attempt to build a watercolor-like effect um, so it's sort of emulating it and if we click you can see how it does this strange gradation between the different points of uh, tone in here so in the original snail you could see that there's already some gradient effect but here it's like blowing it out and if we zoom out a whole bunch get the brush and I'm just going to create a new layer real fast and hide the old layer Gonna shrink this down okay see that smush that we're getting it's trying to uh, create a wet edge effect notice that we have 100% opacity and 100% flow but we're still getting like a transparency normal strange transparency it's just it finishing calculations when everything is done and you're moving off of it so in other words notice we have a snail if I wiggle the snail it gets kind of bloomed out on the inside. And if I come back over, notice that the antennas are completely disappearing, even though there is a translucency to the actual brush. See how it's not at 100%, but if I go over the little antennas, it uh, smushes it away. That's what Wet Edges does. So hopefully that demonstration uh, makes sense. There's, I can't really think of another way to put it other than it tries to blend together the brush where it was previously while also adding sort of a bloom effect that is a brightness to the core of the brush itself, uh, which you can see here. If you play with it, you'll get a feel for it really quickly. So that's the wet edges. Get rid of the little wet edge test. Pop back over here. That gives us build up. Let's switch colors check build up and notice that it will correspond with the uh, build up button here but they call it the enable art brush style build up effects so this was good enough for quite a while before airbrushes started going on when I click and hold you'll see it gets darker and darker and darker it fills it in if I drag along 
it will become darker and darker and darker as well. So let's try this with a lower opacity. Notice that the darkening will not go over the opacity. It simply loses the capture brushes uh, gradations that create the snail itself. Now what happens if we do it with flow instead? Now this is a little more interesting. I feel as though these work together better. Remember how flow behaves where if you pass over something, a stroke again and again and again, it will darken it up to the full amount. So in this case with a flow of 30%, that means that I'll have 30% the first pass and then it will increase every time. However, with the buildup effect in place, a click will also have a flow-like effect. So they go very well together. You can click and hold to make something darker and darker and darker and darker. It's as though you're clicking again and again and again and again and again when you don't have the buildup effect on. So in other words, I can get a green one. If I did not have it, I could just click it a million times and have the same effect as the uh, buildup. So there you have it. That's the one, one more mystery solved. That leaves uh, Protect Texture and Smoothing. So Protect Texture isn't going to apply for our capture brushes without a texture added in. Uh, and it will not apply to a number of things, actually, without a texture added in. What it means is if you create a texture, and we'll get into what that does, Protect Texture will store that same texture between other brushes that are looking for a texture. So the first brush you put down will load in a texture and protect texture will keep that one loaded as you switch between other textured brushes. So in other words, this won't make much sense until we get to texture, but we'll cover that again uh, when we get there. Last up is smoothing, and I'm going to devote a little video to smoothing by itself so that you can come back to it to see what it does without having to watch the rest of this video. So I'll see you in just a moment.